This is part 5 in our series of lectures on section 4.3. In this lecture, we give the definition of a one-to-one -one function, and we give a few examples. So here's our definition of what it means to say that a function is one-to-one. -one. Suppose we have a function from set A to set B. Then we say that f is one-to-one, -one, or we can also say that f is an injection, or we can say that f is injective provided the following is true, for any pair of points in the domain, if x1 and x2 are different, then f of x1 is different from f of x2. So it's basically saying that different x values have different images. When you're actually trying to prove that a given function is injective, this isn't generally the form you work with because um, saying that things aren't equal to each other is, can be hard to work with. It's much easier to work with equalities because then we have techniques for simplifying those equalities. So in practice, we'll typically prove that something is one-to-one -one by looking instead at the contrapositive of this statement. So that says, for all x1 and x2 in your domain, if f of x1 is equal to f of x2, then x1 equals x2. So let's practice on a simple example. Suppose I give you the function f from r to r given by f of x equals 3x minus 9. Prove that that is injective. At the top of the page, I've written down your working definition of injective. I've written it in the contrapositive form because that's the easiest one to work with. So you would prove this statement that f is injective by just simply reading this from left to right and writing a proof that it's true. So why don't you try that one on your own? Uh, put your video on pause. Try to prove this function is injective using this definition. So here's my proof. I'm just looking at this definition. I say let x1 and x2 be elements of, in this case, the set of real numbers. And then we suppose our hypothesis is true. Suppose f of x1 equals f of x2. And then you'll fill in for this particular function. That means that 3x1 minus 9 equals 3x2 minus 9. We need to deduce that x1 equals x2, so we'll just follow through from this. We know that this is true, so if you cancel off the 9s and then you divide out the 3s, you see that x1 equals x2, and therefore f is injective. We've managed to show that assuming our hypothesis that we were able to deduce the conclusion. Here's another simple one for you. Take the sine function. Prove that the sine function viewed as a function from r into r is not injective. So in order to, to do that, you have to take the negation of this statement here, and then you have to prove that it's true. So when you negate this, it's there exist x1 and x2 in your domain, in this case in the set of real numbers, such that, now what is the negation of p implies q? It's p and not q. So it's such that f of x1 equals f of x2 and x1 is not equal to x2. Okay, so in other words, you have to produce two points, different points, but having the same f values. So why don't you follow through on this working definition that f is not injective and see if you can write out a proof for this particular example. Here's my solution. Uh, I just have to explain to you how I'm going to choose x1 and x2. They should be different, but the f values should be the same. So there are lots of possibilities here. Here I took x1 to be 0 and x2 to be pi because I know that sine of 0 and sine of pi are both equal to 0. So I choose x1 and x2 in this way, and then I just have to verify that both of these things happen. So clearly x1 is not equal to x2. And f of x1 is sine of 0, which is 0, but 0 is also equal to sine of, whoops, there's a, a misprint there, I should have put a pi, sine of pi, uh, which is 0, and that's f of x2, and therefore f is not injective. I want to close by making a comment about this definition of injectivity. 
So I'm just recalling the definition. This is something, of course, that you have to memorize. <clears throat> so the working definition to say that f is injective is to say for all x1 and x2 in the domain, if f of x1 equals f of x2, then x1 is equal to x2. Now what is the converse of that statement? The converse just reverses the hypothesis in the conclusion. It says, for all x1 and x2 in your domain, x1 equals x2 implies f of x1 equals f of x2. Each time I teach this class, I, I always find a few students who believe that this is what it means to say that a function is injective. But in fact, this is true for any function, because this just simply says that every element of your domain has a unique image. That's exactly what it means to say that f is a function as opposed to a general relation. If f is a function, then x1 uh, can only have one image, namely f of x1. x2 can only have one image, namely f of x2. So if x1 and x2 are equal, then of course f of x1 has to equal f of x2. So this is not what it means to say that f is injective. It's always true. Whereas number one is not always true. Some functions are injective, some functions are not. So this is the one that you need to prove if you're trying to show that f is injective.